doesn't mean that it won't uh, burn off but it's a little bit overcast right now and it is Monday September 24th 2018 and as promised last week we have a little surprise for you so we're gonna let that run first and then we will hit some news uh, in a, about five minutes So here's the little surprise uh, video that I said I would post if I got the opportunity. And what this is, is um, an abandoned house. We cannot go in. It's very unstable. But it's called, at least by, uh, by Pyre Media and I, the Cout House. Um, because often we will drive by and this place is inhabited by cows, no kidding, not lying at all. So let's just take a walk back and see if we can get a different perspective, which we're going to end up with some trees in our way, and I'm actually going to cut the video and reposition, so stay tuned. Is um, another view of one side, this is the south side of the house, and it's very hard to see, I cannot get any closer because I would be trespassing. Um, and there's no cows inhabiting the house today. But I thought it was kind of an interesting thing um, and that you might find it amusing. We've got three uh, articles up and a little clip. And the first one is from Reuters this morning. And it's entitled, Iran warns US. Israel expect a devastating revenge from state TV and this was published in London by by Reuters for World News September 24th at 2 17 a.m. No, I was not up at 2 17. I was up two hours later Let's move on so from London uh, the deputy head of Iran's Revolutionary Guard warns U.S. and Israeli leaders on Monday to expect a, quote, devastating, quote, close quote, response from Iran accusing them of involvement in Saturday's attack on a military parade in the city of Avaz that killed 25 people. And this is a, a shot presumably of that location. And the caption reads, a general view shows an attack on military parade in Avaz, Iran in the, in the September 22nd, 2018 photo by ISNA. And that is Iranian Students News Agency social media via Reuters. Quote, you have seen our revenge before you will see that our response will be crushing and devastating and you will regret what you have done, close quote. Hussein Salami said in a speech before the funeral of the victims in Havaz, 
broadcast live on the state television and we cannot play this little clip without getting in trouble. So, we have a warning from Iran. Uh, next up is um, a report from one American News Network, and this is um, a story entitled, Russia to Supply Syria with S-300 Anti-Missile System Minister. And the photo caption reads, Russia S-30 Anti-Missile Rocket System move along Central Street during a rehearsal for a military parade in Moscow on May 4th, 2009. So this is a stock photo. And Russians traditionally celebrate their victory over Nazi Germany in World War II on May 9th. And this is from Alexander Natruskin uh, via Reuters. The story it reads, September 24th, 2018, so that was this morning, um, from Moscow via Reuters. Russian Defense Milit Minister Sergei Shogu, ah, got to learn Russian too, said on Monday that Moscow will supply an S-300 anti-missile system to Syria within weeks. The announcement came comes a week after the ministry, ministry accused Israel of indirectly causing the downing of a Russian military plane in Syria that killed 15 servicemen. And the report is by Maria Kislova, written by Gabrielle Tarot Farber, and edited by Robin Pomeroy. And then there's an uh, One American News Network update. Uh, oh, but it's from a year ago. So that's not really an update. All right, so now I want to take us to, oh, I need to, I'm going to pause here for one second and uh, update our little uh, post-it note there because I have neglected a, a credit. All right, we are good to go, except for now my microphone is out of position. Goodness gracious, what a morning. All right, so this is from Jake Marfonius of Blackstone Intelligence, and he's going to answer this question about Russia and the no-fly zone in Syria. And so let's take a listen to Jake. We're going to listen to about three minutes of his broadcast. <laughs> Сергей Лавров отметил в интервью, что именно Чинуши препятствует этому. Могло стоять ЦРО. Ясно, что он заранее знал об этих атаках. Джейк Мафониус, основатель Blackstone Intelligence, управляет глобальной сетью человеческого интеллекта. Мафониуса ищет из-за его опыта в ближневосточных делах, в том числе связи между ЦРУ и террористическими группами. It is Wednesday night, September 19th, 2018. I'm Jake Morfonios with the Blackstone Intelligence Report. Some of you asked me if the rumors are true that Russia has implemented a no-fly zone in response to the most recent Israeli strikes on Syria. The practical reality of what Russia ha has done is, uh, yes, they have established a no-fly zone, but there's a lot more to it than a simple yes or no answer can uh, can explain. So, so let me go through this for a minute. For much of the last year, Russia has issued a NOTAM around the 20th of just about every month. Uh, a NOTAM is the abbreviation for a notice to airmen and mariners. NOTAMs are basically notices that are issued to uh, notify planes of a condition or a situation in a particular region of airspace. Uh, they are alerts to hazards that keep aviation accidents from happening. Uh, but they also serve as warnings 
given from militaries to others to stay out of that airspace or risk the consequences. And based on the NOTAM that Russia just issued, there are certainly some very serious potential consequences for aircraft, including uh, possibly Israeli fighter jets that cross into this airspace. Uh, this Russian NOTAM essentially creates a no-fly zone in areas around Syria and Lebanon over the Mediterranean where the Israeli jets have been flying through to carry out some of their airstrikes. This Russian NOTAM says that between September 19th through September 26th, there is a grave risk to planes that try to fly through specific areas below 19,000 feet. The pretext for the warning is that it's based upon Russian naval missile exercises. Um, like I said, this is something that Russia has been doing on a fairly regular basis this time of the month for a while now. But there are elements to this newest NOTAM that makes the warning potentially different. The area of coverage is different than in the past, and it more closely matches up with the flight paths that Israeli warplanes have been taking. The new no-fly zone that they're establishing now is going to be from flight level 000 to level 190, which means 19,000 feet. So the jets that fly under 19,000 feet to, uh, would be, for example, Israeli uh, military jets that go in low uh, to carry out their airstrikes. So by ordering all of the planes, including Israeli fighter jets, to fly above the 19,000 feet mark, what this does is it puts the jets into striking range of Syria's older S-200 anti-aircraft missile defense systems. It makes it hard for Israel to be able to go in and carry out the same kinds of strikes that they've been conducting. And we want to thank Jake for giving us a little update on that. Like I said, we're not going to play his whole clip. I encourage you to go... Um, listen to his reports. He reports on a wide variety of topics, including global politics, global military, global intelligence, as well as uh, stories in the United States, including outstanding coverage on Las Vegas. And so please, we, we have a lot of respect for his background and knowledge. Um, he was an expert in financial crime analysis at one point in his life, and so he brings a wide variety of skills to his broadcasts. Now we're going to just, um, we're going to do a little setup. We're going to look at a map of, uh, well, not a setup. We're going to do a conclusion. We're going to, oh man, my map's gone. All right, anyway, thanks, Google Earth. We're going to look at, oh, no, here it is. We're going to look at uh, this area that uh, Iran, our first story, is complaining about, and also the Mediterranean. So our first story, <clears throat> where Iran is accusing Israel of... Um, killing some people during a military parade um, and is threatening, quote, devastating revenge, close quote. So I just want you to see the area we're talking about. This is, you know, for, for the, all intents and purposes, without zooming out too much farther, this is the Middle East. You know, um, Turkey is considered part of Europe because it's a NATO uh, it's a NATO conference member, but in reality, it's not. It's part of the Middle East. So we have Turkey, we have um, Syria, Lebanon, Israel. This is the Delta, um, the Nile Delta. This is um, this is Jordan. This is Iraq. Uh, Saudi Arabia is in here somewhere, and I can't. Uh, this is Saudi Arabia's no this is Jordan so all right I can't 
I can't see it right away, so we're just going to move on. And my bad. Usually I can point all this stuff out in the Middle East, but a little foggy this morning. Uh, so here's Iran. Look at how far. I, and Tehran is right up here. So let's just do a little, uh, you know, the capital of Iran. So it's roughly in this area. I've already measured it once, so I know roughly it's in this delta area of the Caspian Sea, uh, inland from the Caspian Sea. So we're just going to hit a, a marker point here. Hello. There we go. And in Israel, this is approximately where Jerusalem is. So, uh, look at that distance. That's uh, 1,730 miles, or kilometers, sorry. So it's, seven, it's 1,075 miles. So let's just, for comparison purposes, I'm going to screw up my map, I just know it. But for comparison purposes, let's just do a little... Uh, Let's just do a little kind of, uh, I don't know, comparison. Yeah, why not? So here's the United States, which we are, most of us, much more familiar with. We could actually name a state or two without the labels. And let's go from D.C., which is, let's see, we want... 1730 kilometers. So let's go from DC, which is somewhere right in here, and let's measure out 1730. Well, it didn't grab my starting point. All right, now let's measure out 1730. 15, whoops. 17, 1729, 1733, Ugh, so frustrating. All right, 17, come on. Let's just hit it right here because we're going to be here all day. So let's figure out where that is. It's from the D.C. area to... Missouri almost to Kansas and let's find out where that is almost to Kansas City so the so the distance comparatively uh, between Tehran and Jerusalem is the same distance uh, within you know a kilometer or two uh, or a tenth of a mile, uh, a tenth of, yeah, a tenth of, less than a tenth of a mile. Same distance as from, um, the D.C. area, well, actually, no, we're, this is southern New York. So, okay, Long Island, we'll just say Long Island. It's from New York, almost to Kansas City. You know, within... I'm going to call that 20 miles, roughly. That's, you know, let's pull out. Look at that. I should have probably set this up better and done a uh, done a screenshot with a, a transparent overlay. But you get the idea. That's a, you know, that's a, a ways away. We're talking from the East Coast all the way to the, to the center the, of the... Uh, Midwest in the United States. All right, let's move on. Our favorite senator today, Diane Feinstein from Breitbart News, and they are on this story. Diane Feinstein demands another delay after another Kavanaugh accusation. Where do they get these people, and how much are they paying them? That's that's my question. So this was yesterday, written by Ian Mason for Breitbart. And this is an AP photo 
taken by Scott Applewhite, and it's file footage, so it's not yesterday's photo or the day before. Senator Dianne Feinstein, Democrat from California, the Senate Judiciary Committee's ranking Democrat, is demanding Sunday, yesterday, that Chairman Chuck Grassley, a Republican from Iowa, agree to another delay in in the additional hearing on Supreme Court nominee Judge Brett Kavanaugh set for Thursday. So that'd be Thursday this week. Because they've already delayed it. Remember, it was supposed to be over the weekend they were going to have this Dr. Christine Blasey Ford, you know, showdown. And then they postponed it. And now it's postponed to Thursday. And so now let's just move on. The hearing was finally set Saturday when Kavanaugh accuser Christine Blasey Ford's legal team agreed to tentatively appear after continual delays and breakdowns in negotiations over requests such as wanting Kavanaugh to defend himself before the accuser testifies. Sorry, that doesn't happen in a court of law, and this is not a court of law. Uh, I'm going to refrain from saying what I think it is. Then Sunday, Ronan Farrow and Jane Mayer of the, York, of the New Yorker broke a new accusation by Deborah Ramirez, a woman claiming an 18-year-old Kavanaugh exposed himself to her at a drunken party at a Yale University as a Yale University freshman. Ramirez, according to Farrow and Mayer, took six days of discussion with her lawyer before she was sure it was Kavanaugh. Oh, come on. Really? Really? <sighs> Senator Dianne Feinstein tweets to us yesterday, Thursday's hearing should be canceled in light of a disturbing new allegation of sexual misconduct against Brett Kavanaugh. The FBI must investigate all allegations. Let me remind the Senator from California that the FBI does not handle local cases like this. If it took place at Yale, then it should be uh, handled by the local, the campus police first at the time, and then the local police if there's uh, potential criminal evidence. Okay? So we're now, again, more than 35 years after the fact. And she tweeted this on Sunday. In response, Feinstein quickly penned a letter to Grassley with additional demands for delays and investigations. Quote, I am writing to request an immediate postponement of any further proceedings related to the nomination of Brett Kavanaugh, close quote, the letter reads, quote, I also ask that the newest allegations of sexual misconduct be referred to the FBI for investigation and that you join our request for the White House to direct the FBI to investigate the allegations of Christine Blasey Ford as well as these new claims, quote, quote, close quote. I'd like to remind the Senator again the FBI has already investigated Dr. Blasey Ford's uh, allegations and said there is nothing there. They've closed their investigations already. I should probably bring up a permanent reference to that and have it over here on the screen every day so that I can tell you exactly when that happened. And, um, and she, then she's asking Grassley to request the White House direct the FBI. Now, why does the White House need to direct the FBI to do an investigation um, of the allegations of Dr. Blasey Ford? Why does the White House have to do that? Um, they've already closed their investigation, as we just said. The White House should not be any part of this at all, nor should the Senate. Moving along. 
Feinstein goes on to cite Farrow and Mayer's additional reporting about, quote, jungle juice, close quote, fueled assaults by other students at the 1980s Georgetown prep and ex-girlfriend of Mark Judge. Okay, let, before we read this next quote, where do we find the term, quote, jungle juice, close quote, first in popular media? I think maybe it might be a variation on the term go-go juice, and that was um, a term for what Honey Boo Boo's mother was giving her to get her amped up at three and four and five years old for the beauty pageants Honey Boo Boo was entered in. And if you recall, it was nothing but soda and some kind of energy drink, I believe, although I, that may not be correct, and sugar. So soda is laden with sugar. They poured more sugar in the soda, and there may have been an energy drink component. I'm not sure about that last part. <sighs> So the block quote says, today Deborah Ramirez came forward with serious allegations of misconduct by Judge Kavanaugh. The New Yorker article recounting her experience states that there are witnesses who can corroborate her claims and who challenge Mr. J Mr. Judge's account. Oh, this is a uh, Oh, Mark Judge. Okay. Challenge Mr. Judge's account. And investigation needs to be conducted as part of Judge Kavanaugh's background. Investigation by career professionals of the FBI, not partisan staff of the committee. Grassley has yet to issue a public response to Ramirez's claims or Feinstein's requests. And over the weekend, I saw a handful of tweets, I'm assuming, not a handful, <laughs> I saw a truckload of tweets, and I'm assuming that those tweets have to do directly with this uh, new Feinstein uh, request for delays and investigations and all that stuff. You understand what they're doing here, right? They are Anita Hilling, Judge Kavanaugh, just as they did in the Judge Clarence Thomas hearings. They are doing the same thing with these women, women but instead of just one woman making accu accusations, which was Anita Hill, which is the precedent for Feinstein making these moves, even though it's not the Senate's responsibility, this is exactly what they're doing. They're, they're, they're uh, doing the same, it's the same playbook as Justice Thomas had to endure. And all these years later, Justice Thomas has a sterling uh, record both legally and career-wise in terms of his daily work on the job. We have heard not complaint one for, what is it, 20 years he's been on the bench, maybe 30, I can't, I can't remember. Um, <clears throat> but I, if it's 30 years or a little less between 20 and 30 years, I'm not gonna argue with that because I remember I was a grown woman at the time raising kids when this stuff happened. So, Senator Feinstein, you know, in my humble opinion, as a member of we the people of the United States, not a member of your state, but still dependent on your um, judgment calls and your um, legislative activity, I'm asking you to stop. This is inappropriate and we need to move on. 
And we see through what you're doing. All right, enough. And here we are back at the desk. The dog has been amazingly quiet this morning, not pestering. She got taken out before the school buses arrived and got fed, and so she's behaving herself because she found herself in dog jail at 1 o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> she was found comfortably snoozing on the futon. And that is not acceptable. We do not allow her on the carpet or on the futon unless she's called um, over and never on the futon, never. Except the one day, and this is probably my fault, although I've caught her on it before this happened, uh, the day two or three weeks ago, she got herself all caught up in and tangled up uh, to the point where she was choking herself with her chain wrapped around her her little choke chain that uh, is attached to her leash leash wrapped around a sapling I was pretty uh, unnerved by that and so at about seven o'clock at night I had taken her flat collar off as soon as she came in and so she was just collarless and wanted if she was hurt I wanted her to heal without it being irritated and about seven o'clock that night I she was just bugging the crap out of me and so I let her come up on the futon and lay on my left side while I was I think I was over at uni's channel but I could be wrong um, at any rate you know, my fault for breaking the rules myself. So, at 1 o'clock in the morning, I discovered her on the futon, and off to dog jail she went. And I think she knew she was in trouble, so she did not try and escape dog jail until I let her out this morning. All right, with that, we are going to wrap it up. I'm going to give you another clip of the cow house and the area, and then run you into the outro. outro the haze or overcastedness, if that's a word, has burned off. It is going to be another sunny day here in my little neck of the woods. And I would re be remiss if I did not give a special shout out and a big thank you to Pyre Media for yesterday's little road trip out into the countryside in our little neck of the woods. I really appreciate that. I was so looking forward to doing those little clips um, to show you the cow house. And this is also a hat tip to Exploring with Fighters, the group that we featured two weeks ago or maybe last week as featured creators out of the UK, they, uh, they have really got a, a good channel going and they present some really fun adventures. So if you haven't gone and looked at Exploring with Fighters, you know, when you're bored and you need to be amused go watch them exploring. They're a lot of fun. Again, thanks very much to Pyre Media. I hope you have a great day. Until I see you again, here's some more of the cow house. Here is a look straight through the house. You can see there's, you know, there's no windows, there's no doors uh, to speak of. And I know because I've seen pictures of it that there's probably not much flooring left although this is uh, old post and beam so what's left is pretty strong and I kinda wish there were cows in there today but there aren't so I thought you would think that was interesting I certainly think it's funny and interesting and that was my little surprise for you so here's um, you know it's posted private property keep out it's owned by farmers in the area but there's the barn where the cows may actually supposed to be living and some old equipment looks like maybe a milking shed at one time it's hard to know uh, i've been trying to do research on this property and i haven't come up with much 
but it is really funny uh, to see cows walking in and out of the house at will on occasion when we drive by to go pick up lumber or some baked goods from some uh, vendors here in our area. Well, here are some of the livestock that is just east of this uh, little cow house. And there's some sheep. It's very hard. The sun is right in my camera. So it's very hard for me to see. I hope it's getting in frame. It seems like it is. Uh, there's sheep in that pasture. Looks like there might be some uh, cows way back there. Let's zoom in and see if we can. Sorry about that. No gimbal, as you're aware. Some cows, some sheep. feed bales, and some horses. And the sun is just right in my right eye as I shoot.